welcome to another fun-filled episode of Black Opinions Matter, motherfucker. My name is Amino Hassan. I'm joined, as always, by Black Trey, Big Jerv, and Jay Skills. We got a hell of a show for you guys. No Juju Gotti this week. He's recovering from Vegas. Ah, uh, yes, the Super Bowl. We won't talk about the Super Bowl, oddly enough, because by the time you're listening to this, Super Bowl already happened, but we're recording it hours before it started, so we figured, ah, what's the point? But we get into a lot of other things, like the NBA trade deadline. Did Spencer Dinwiddie make the right decision in signing with the Lakers? Also, the Grammys. Killer Mike won three. Did he deserve it? And what are some other big-time Grammy snubs from throughout the years? We also talk about a time-honored tradition on Cinephobe. Let's talk about haircuts and hairlines and barbers. This time, finding a backup barber. Not as easy as you might think. And we also got deep into a conversation about Kobe Bryant's statue. You had one job, statue maker. Just make sure it looks like him. We get into all of that, but first, patreon.com slash count the dings. That's where you go to get all the extra content. We're doing the watch alongs now for the NBA games. We're doing the watch alongs for Cinephobe. There's going to be one tonight honoring Carl Weathers. Uh, we're going to do the Carl Weathers Memorial uh re Washington of Rocky Ford tonight, Monday, February 12th. So uh if you are listening to this in the morning, make sure you are locked in tonight. We also got the special edition Cinephobe episodes, the OG podcasts, exclusive segments. You got Coming Home with Tom and Trey. You've got the Zazcast with Zach and Waz. Um the Discord. There's so much more. Patreon.com slash count the things. Make sure you are locked in right there all right let's start the conversation with a very late review of the marvels from me and jason madison yeah i was gonna say i mean i watched uh, the marvels last night on- me too bro <laughs> yeah, i did <laughs> disney plus yeah what, what was your takeaway i mean it's just a continuation of like you know what we talked about last week which is It's a little not as bad as some of the other ones, but it's still like, hey, Marvel back in the day, back when it was like the X-Men movies and like the Fantastic Four movies, the pre-MCU Marvel movies were like, hey, we take ourselves really seriously. And every once in a while, someone will make a joke. Ha ha ha. Now back to taking ourselves seriously. And then MCU started and it's like, no, we can fuck around with this shit. Like it could be cool and it could be like high level serious. But there's always something that, like, there's a, I don't know how to describe it. There's an undercurrent of, like, yo, we're just fucking around out here. To the point where, like, when you watch Deadpool, which I know isn't MCU, but Deadpool 2, where he fights Cable and he says, ooh, you're so dark and broody, like a DC villain, right? (laughs) Because they're making the point that, like, that's the the side that always be taking their shit way too seriously. And Mm -hmm. we're the ones that have fun over here. Right. And then, like, ever since like phase four or phase five it's been like back to like taking shit too seriously. Right. And I'm just like, you know that. And also I think the one thing that they've, these, these villains that are like, yo, you only going to be here for about 15 minutes dog. I, I don't, I really don't need to get to know you like, Oh girl. Like that's I, like, what, that was my, like I had two main takeaways from the movie and one was I really like the uh, Miss Marvel Kamala Khan girl. Yeah, because she doesn't take the shit seriously. She's she gives- really yeah. She gives a great performance. She's funny. Yeah. She she can do the action stuff, and she's just like a good addition to their whole thing. Yeah. And then on the opposite side of that, yeah, you got the villain chick who's like just this faceless, nameless, nothing character that you like. You said it's it felt like watching an episode of power rangers like yeah like you know what i'm saying like you're just you're just here for this episode we know that you're gonna be gone by the end i don't need to learn your backstory or nothing deep or special about you you know like even when she died it didn't even really make sense to me like she put on the other bangle and it's not it's too strong for her but then the other girl can wear the bangles like Okay, I guess. I like I like I just saw her as soon as she showed up. I was like, I don't need to get to know you. I, and it, it reminded me, like at first, I was like, well, she doesn't have to be a big bad like Thanos. But then I'm like, yo, man, remember Ronan the Accuser? Yeah, that nigga was in like three movies. Right. And 
Or the, even uh, Hella. Hella was fire. Like, but I'm just saying, like, a lot of the good villains. Yeah. Like, I don't. You don't show up on my screen, and I know immediately, yo. I don't need to know jack shit about you. <laughs> right. Like, I, like she came in, and I was like, I don't. Like, was she mad? I guess she's mad. About some <laughs> shit. I don't about know. Some, yeah. Somebody fucked up something with her. Yeah, yeah. and, I, and I, was, I was like, that's it. That's so. It's just like they don't give us anything to kind of be attached to. Yeah. And the, the conflicts that they do come up with are all. Like, oh, Rambo, Monica Rambo is mad that old oh, girl went away and didn't come back for 30 years. Like, right, oh, right. Okay. I mean, like, I when you see what happened to the world, like to the universe, and 50% of everyone disappeared, you know, like, kind of can say, oh, okay. So, like, maybe she was, in, she was up to some more important shit than fucking right. seeing how you did on your algebra test, you know? Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, no, nah, but I thought it was better than what I expected. Cause I yeah. expected it to be completely trash. And I was like, oh, like this is actually kind of cool. Like, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's just I, wanted to it's all right, man. Like, yeah. it's, I just like, they need, they need something to get them back. And I don't know what that something's going to be. I really so, don't know. Can, can I give y'all my takeaway from, from y'all little conversation? Yeah. So that's, that's a no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, not, and that's the other thing. I'm like, not going to take used... the time out of my day. The the oh, oh my fault. There is one thing. The after the credit scene. That's the one thing that is I don't know. Spoiler alert. This movie been out for months. Yeah. So Monica Rambo saves the day by basically sacrificing herself, going through this unknown hole. But what it ends up doing is sending her into an alternate reality. And so when she wakes up, she's in a hospital bed. Sitting next to her is her mom. Her mom is supposed to be a died of cancer. She's like, oh shit, mom. What are you doing? I I've missed you so much. Da, da, da. And, and her mom is kind of like, oh, nigga, I don't know you. <laughs> and then Kelsey Grammer as Beast from X Men walks in and asks Monica Rambo's mom, who's binary, what's this about? She's like, I don't know. I've never seen her in my life. And we realize we're in an alternate reality where the X Men exist. So the X Men are going to be more formally introduced into the MCU now. That was yeah, cool. cool. I thought that was pretty cool. But no, I fuck with that. I I thought it was like yeah the only kind of like worthwhile activity in the whole movie to be quite honest with you. I was yes. like the rest of it, you know. That's the other thing, like the new MCU phase or whatever. It's really disjointed, and like it doesn't seem like it doesn't feel like a story. Yeah, it, looks, like, it feels like, and I, they might be able to bring it all together some way, but especially it doesn't feel like a story which i guess might be a positive because if they wrote my man jonathan majors out right they have to rearrange a bunch of shit anyway yeah but isn't he being recast who did they say is gonna be is he recast i thought they were gonna like pivot to dr doom no i think that uh well i don't know the last thing i saw was that he was gonna be recast by like i don't know somebody. i'd rather he, him be recast than than you know what did they, they say it was supposed to be bull who? Um, my man. Um, the dude that was just—he was the talk of the town like a week ago. That's what I thought it was Coleman Domingo, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. homie. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Coleman. Domingo. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. You know, Domingo. you know, dude. Yo, you you know him. He, he was in Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah, he's he's that. Uh, and Rustin, that new movie. That's niggas. I'm looking at his shit. It's a bunch of shit I ain't never seen. Not seen Rustin. Not seen the new Color Purple. Not seen Fear of the Walking Dead. Not seen the new Candyman. Not. I saw Ma Rainey's Black Bottom for for Bob. Oh, yeah. I don't remember a fucking thing. I, <laughs> I did like see that movie. I saw Zola. Um, did you I... see uh, uh, Euphoria? Yeah. Who was he in Euphoria? He plays um, Zendaya's uh, sponsor. A sponsor. Oh, oh, he was. They only did that. that they did that one scene where they're in a diner, and that's it. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. and he it comes like around a, a little hour. bit. Is that yeah. coming back? Like, what's the deal with that? Yeah, John? It is, yeah it's coming got, back. They, they got to work some stuff around though, because you know, um, Angus passed away. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah which, yeah, back from another thing too. Like, it makes me wonder about. I think I was texting about the Mandalorian movie. Like, I yeah. know they, I know they was gonna have to have Carl Weathers in there, so. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I mean, you can't recast that. No, you can't. You, you can't. can't. But then, like, that's the whole tricky thing with Star Wars is that they've gone, they get, they've already given us two AIs. Yeah, they gave us um, 
Grand Moff Tarkin. Yes. And, and Princess and Leia. Leia. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, but anything after Rogue One, mm-hmm. that's not James Earl Jones. That's AI voice. Really? Yep. Damn. Rogue One was the last thing he voiced. That's Rogue crazy. One and Rebels season two. And then after that, he signed the rights to them that they yeah. can use his voice. Because even in Rogue One, you can hear that nigga old. Right. That nigga He's not like, the yeah, same Darth Vader. Yeah, Darth Vader having a hard day today. <laughs> Excuse me. You've seen that they uh re-releasing Phantom Menace in theaters? Yep. May May 4th is going to come out. Are you going to go see it? Damn him? right. <laughs> Damn right I am. I'm going to take the kids. That's the only yeah. thing that's going to get me to the theater. Wow. I know how this movie go. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I don't know if I would be like interested to go see it in a theater again, but I actually saw it originally in the Magic Johnson Theater. You, know, you should go back to the same Magic Johnson Theater <laughs> and watch it again there, just just to, for symmetry. For, for saw, nostalgia, yeah. Where did I see it? I saw it. It must have been in Atlanta. Yeah, I saw it in Atlanta. Damn, yeah, that was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. 1999. What's the, what's the What's the best out of the um, prequel trilogy? The last one. Yeah. Revenge of the Sith. Like that's sure. that's the best one. Like that's that's like because they got away from the whininess and got into like let's do some shit here, man. Yeah, for sure. John, uh, are you are you not a Star Wars? Nah, yeah. nah, <laughs> nah, I'm letting y'all. I'm just letting y'all nerd out it's real a, quick. It's a, yeah, it's a me, <laughs> Mino rolls. An order of Mino rolls for sure. Yeah. Nah, I'm good. This nigga, man. You ever order Uber Eats? I hate when they say, "Yo, this should take twenty to thirty minutes." An hour and later. Be longer. Uh, yeah. It's an hour, so, though. Nigga, and, you can't get, and you can't get your food free. It's just nothing. Your food just cold. Just stop. Oh, don't get me. You know, having, to, having to warm up your food when it gets there is actually one of the worst things that can happen to you when you order. I'd rather my order be wrong and hot. I got fucking shamed on Twitter cold for complaining. For well, complaining. They, well, yo, they tell you say, first world problems? No, I mean, uh, let me just yeah, say this they, right they hit me with that. They were like, how dare you? Who the fuck do you think you are? The nigga let... If, if you've ever been to my place, Jerry's been to my place, it's like hard to get in for one. If the instructions say, it's very simple, by the way. I got a virtual doorman. Buzz you in, get you in, whatever. Leave at my door. Not at the mm-hmm. building door. Yep. Leave at my door. Yep. Like, I'm here, bro. Even if you having problems getting in, I will walk my black ass downstairs and come meet you. This Yo. nigga left the food on top of a bush, <laughs> took the picture, and niggas is like, hey, yo, you usually couldn't go get your food? Nigga, that shit was sitting out there for a minute, too. I didn't get no alert, nothing, nigga. So my food cold. I'm like, nigga, the leave at the door shit, what's up? Like, the whole time that shit just been sitting there. It's cooked. It's Dog, cooked. I'm telling you, like, and people were like, oh, must be nice, or this is the biggest problem in your life. I said, number one, suck my dick. Let's start there. <laughs> Suck my dick. If your life is so fucking tough, so tough that like, how dare I complain about some shit that I, that I just I want you to do your fucking it. job? You that know I what? That I pay for. You know what? You know what you can do? You can go suck a dick. Because here's what. If your life is that tough, why the fuck are you on the internet reading about people's food and shit? <laughs> Should you be addressing your be tough fair. ass life? To be fair, it be homeless niggas with phone plans. That shit lit to me. Niggas still be tapped into the world, nigga, despite not eating. That shit fire. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, you need to find something else to do. Because this niggas shit be, right here. Niggas be on the subway with me cook, bro. But nigga know. He know everything that's still going on. They know what day. They know what time it is. That shit fire to me. Like, nigga, the technology got them niggas cooked. I'm like, man, this shit is wild. What the fuck happened to my order? Yeah. Oh, we're right now, literally. Yeah, motherfuckers, <laughs> listen. Oh, this is we're not lying. Right. Never mind. I was gonna hey. say, yo, we listen to the pod. Fuck your order, nigga. Jason, as a writer, as a writer, do you uh, <laughs> do you put do you how do you feel as a driver and a writer, right? When you get into an Uber and that shit smell, like what's the rifle? What's the rifle star should a nigga give? For a bad smelling car, cause I be feeling bad. I still don't give a nigga a one. I might let the window down, but my nose is so a, sensitive, nigga. It's an automatic one star, and if the per- and my, I think I may have said this before, but my biggest issue with people getting in my car is people smelling. Like that's 
you know, people that shit always, don't leave your car. You stuck with you it. Gotta, right? You gotta, you gotta, gotta air it out. Poop. You gotta you eat gotta, the poop. You gotta air it out because a lot of motherfuckers, you know, man, a lot of people smell. You know, like niggas be. I was just about to say that, dog. Niggas be smelling like backwoods and musk. You know, some people got that wet dog smell. Some people be smelling like the back of the kitchen, wet noodles. Like niggas be (laughs) smelling wet noodles. Anything with wet wet noodles smell like. It just smells like. Like the I didn't know yellow. one nigga that smelled like a mop though, like a mop That's in a bucket. That shit was crazy. It was like a berry stale stink. Yeah, like, like <sighs> and it'd be a lot of motherfuckers that be smelling, like, especially like motherfuckers get in in groups. Niggas with backpacks be smelling. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot. <laughs> said, of hold on, hold on, hold on, my nigga, because I I stay with a back fat, my nigga, in my hot. You a smelly I, nigga, man. I, That's I'm what not, it is. Nah, 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 I'm, smelly I'm ass germ with a nigga, backpack. Ninety percent of the time, a nigga with a backpack gonna have a sense to him. I'm telling you, you bro. Listen, saying? like, it, I'm just saying, like, and it could be a nigga that I think he fresh coming out the London hotel, and a nigga gonna smell like the pack of old Oscar Myers, like. Damn, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> got some, he laying in some. I'm standing up for the backpack ass, community, my nigga. I'm just saying. So that's yeah, that's my number one. So a one, one? a one. That's an auto one. Yeah, and then get in. Can you just rider. not give him a rating? Is no, that you is have that to. you have to? Uh, you don't have yeah. to. You could skip, but like by default, I, does it affect your score if you skip? No. So like as a as a rider, like when you don't press it, it just it doesn't show up as anything. You know what I'm saying? But as a driver, I think automatically I'll I'll give you five stars. Like if I just hit like accept after the ride is done, so I can like it's so hard. <laughs> One of the funny things, and this is it's never gotten awkward, but like it's a funny kind of like it could possibly get awkward moment. So sometimes when I want to give somebody like three stars, two stars, one star, whatever, like you know when the ride is done, you have to like swipe. And then like their name pops up with like the rating and then that's when you give it but they're like also in the process of getting out the car so like i kind of want to wait to if i want to give them a low rating i kind of want to wait till they get out the car so they don't see me like giving them the one star (laughs) but so i'll just be like so you sneak this to one star yeah 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 i'm like (laughs) low-key sneak this and you know what i'm saying subtweeting the nigga in the front seat like yeah nigga you were trash one you know, um, and then they ask you to put like what the reasoning was, you know, but it just be like random shit. It's never, you know, because sometimes I give a nigga one star if it's 48 degrees and a nigga want to roll the window down. Hey, bro. Yeah. One star, son. Did so is, is there is, is there any in between on like four stars to three stars? You go straight to one star. No, man? I'll give no, I'll give a nigga some threes. I don't yeah. never do a four because it's like, what's the point? Either you five or I really got to cut you down to three. I've done a three so, before so wait, because, wait. listen, if the back seat the is fucking down? filthy. You yeah, bro. If you if it's 40 degrees outside, we it's, a, it's a middle of the that night. That means you stink. And you, and you rolling the window down in the back of my car, you're an asshole. Like, why are you rolling the window down? It's he might think you outside. stink, though. Nigga, I well, you air, s- no, bro. I keep air fresh, freshener. Hold in my up, car. my nigga. So I'm, everybody else can come in your car and stink. But you trying to tell me there's never one time that you that you could have been the reason that they rolled the window down? No, more often than not, they roll the window down because they feel like the car is too warm. But they don't speak up and say anything about it. So they just roll the window <laughs> down, or or they're just you know somebody who runs high. Y'all know people. Some people just. <laughs> My you nigga, yo, I love you. Yo, I love you, bro. My nigga goes from <laughs> yo, oh, you roll my window down, you bitch ass nigga. One star, yo. No, like, that's, I'm paying how dare you. I can give because it's it's certain things that are like really significant to me because that means you just being a jerk and you know that it's getting cold as fuck. What if he, what if he just what if they just like I like riding with the window crack, my G. But if it's f- like 52 degrees outside. Yeah, like that. Uh, I can't get a little hey, breeze. Hey, I can't I get the crack. I, I just checked my rating. I'm at four point eight five, and I know why my shit got docked a couple times. Phoenix, I was with some hoes, and they was doing too much in the back seat. They was like, <laughs> hey, 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 another time I was with some chick, and she opened up a bottle, 
like in the back seat, like open open shit. And what? Like, alcohol. But like, a bottle of what? Yeah, what was probably some tequila. It was okay. probably some tequila. Like, yeah, yeah, but like, like champagne, right? No, 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 no. Nothing that got sex spilled, <laughs> but it was. But you know, it was one of them things. And I think another one, like, I think at the time, my girl didn't want to oh, put on a fucking uh, seatbelt. Seat yeah. Hold like, on. So niggas be out here getting mad because niggas is fucking not just sitting still with their arms by their I mean, side. I mean, rightfully so, nigga. They gotta, I gotta be careful oh, yeah. driving. Sir, I got a four point eight six. I never talk. I never interact and like the niggas just don't like me. I don't know what it is. If you if you uh if you're playing uh music on your phone or like I can hear your like Instagram is super <laughs> loud and you're docking you. I'm Damn, telling you. Damn, this nigga, yo, oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. His, personal, his personal pet peeves out on the nigga, bro. That shit crazy. <laughs> if you're, I if was you're talking, talking shit. On, if you're talking to somebody on speakerphone the whole ride. Docking you for sure. That's crazy. Why are you talking to somebody? On, we're in the car together. Why are hey, you but, talking but, to somebody? But if, on okay, the but whole if time? you can't are you a Uber, are you Uber black are you an Uber black rider? What do you what's your, what's, what do you classify? Rider X? or driver? Driver. I mean X or black. I'm I'm X and comfort. Nigga, being comfort, bro. I should be able to do what the fuck I want to do back there. Like if what? I'm so you saying you going you going I'm, I'm, we on a twenty we I'm, on a twenty minute ride. You Bro. playing Instagram videos, all listen. kind of shit. I can hear Jay. No, I, I gotta, I gotta just listen to your Nerf. shit and shut the fuck up. Jer, yes, for comfort, yes. Jer, get no, no, the fuck Jer, out of here. Jer, for comfort, yes. for comfort, yes. I get options, nigga. Silent ride and heat. Temperature right. shit. Okay. Right. right. Exactly. So oh. exactly. So it's to, the complete opposite. You gotta shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying so. If you so for comfort, you get options, right? You get the temperature, either you want it hot or cold, which I do, and mm-hmm. then it's either quiet ride or happy to chat. It ain't no option for play my Instagram videos loud in the back, or I'm gonna have a loud conversation on speakerphone for 20 minutes like that doesn't quiet ride me and I, I want you to not right, say that's, nothing that's, to and you and I, and and I, and I, and that's for you the, not for me and i shut the fuck up when hey. you go quiet ride but, but this nigga but this nigga about to dock my fucking score because so <laughs> i'm talking because i'm talking on the phone I so paid for you stuff. not to talk not me fam Be happy but i'm sharing the conversation talk, with you nigga but you <laughs> but you talking and you think it's so y'all think it's just it's socially acceptable to talk on speakerphone on your phone in, nigga, in public? You're the, yes, I'm asking, nigga. I'm asking. Y'all think yes. that's cool? Only if I'm in in that situation where in I know situation, I got. You think it's cool to talk on a speakerphone in public, nigga, for a long amount of time? Sure, it's my phone. But I'm not. I, and so I, I don't like it. I don't like it in public to, to be one hundred like with any, you. I, I, I don't. I don't like, like it in public. Being that does that over two. You I, have a two I, minute I'm with time you. limit. I'm, I'm with you on that, but I'm saying if I'm in the car and technically I'm, I'm I got a service to come you, get nigga. me. I paid you. I should be able to do it's what, as long as I'm not being disrespectful towards you or disrespecting your car, your personal preference. I, like I, I like my nigga. You maybe you should add that to your profile so I can say like no to this bull. Like, oh. I could see hey, it. That's, on the, his face. that's the that's the nigga the no speaker phone nigga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you gotta put that in your bio, oh, my nigga. No speaker no phone. Speaker phone. <laughs> Nigga, speaker phone is made, but that's the that's what the service is for, nigga. My hands no. full. I'm doing some other bullshit. Hands I'm full. Doing... You're sitting in the car, my nigga. Like you don't know what I'm doing back there. I might be rolling up some weed, nigga. I'm, you know what I mean? The star taking off. You gonna roll up? <laughs> <laughs> you got your goddamn mind. You got your goddamn mind. Hey, you so if you see the nigga rolling up in LA, bro, in the back seat. You smell it first of all, because you got you gotta smell yeah. it, especially. Yeah, now you got my car smelling like weed. You probably spilt crumbs in the back. So you gonna pull the car over? Oh, are you gonna, no, are no, you no, gonna... no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not interrupting the ride. I'm just gonna dock you at the end. That's what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna be a hey, me. I'm a Uber hey, 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 give you the, work. the irony. The, the bad Jason, you saying this shit, but yeah. the bad shit about Uber is sometimes, like Amin said, his mom ended up with the same rider. Nigga, don't be, don't be that nigga getting in the car like, oh, that's that bitch ass nigga that docked me for my. Weed. I would a like, nigga know if it was even, but even still, because he waited to, he right, waited till they get out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> but I wouldn't even feel a way like if a nigga really wanted to press. Yeah. Like, I, I tell a nigga straight that's to his mo- face, like, yeah, that's my nigga. Mo- yeah, that's <laughs> my shit this week, bro. So vaping, if a nigga's eating in the car, <laughs> drinking alcohol. Cause my bro, fucking, I can't even I can't even dabble one real bro, time. I, I have definitely walked into a car with like a a white claw in my hand. That's what I'm saying, like, bro, that shit is it's janky. Like, you know, one star. You but, get a but, one star. I you get a one star. Uber lives matter, but, man. Well, hold on, but I didn't, <laughs> Jason, I didn't spill anything. Like, he don't, he don't I mean, care, bro. It depends bro. on the night. It depends on the night for drinking. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I let it slide and I won't dock the nigga. You know, sometimes man, you, fun group. you might let that, bro. If that shit happened a hundred times, you he might let that thing slide guy, like man. five. <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> that ain't a couple <laughs> times. Now, now Jerry, just, hold on, now, now, here's, the, guy, man. here's the question. Here's the question. Yeah. Other than body odor, which it doesn't matter, but like some of these infractions, speakerphone talking, uh-huh. drinking, <laughs> uh, maybe having some food or whatever. Would you let it slide if it's a bad bitch doing it? Oh, of course. Ooh. Bad bitch scale is different that's from everybody crazy else's hate. scale. That's crazy. Everybody hate, knows man. that. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's a crazy hate, man. Radiant scale. Yo. They started like a 10 star. <laughs> and then they get it. <laughs> <Yeah. I respect. laughs> it's a long way to get to five. <laughs> it started 10 stars. <laughs> Oh, I respect that. To get to five. <laughs> oh my god! And she gotta be real egregious. No, oh sure. my god! <laughs> oh shit! I want to yo. I want to jump topics here to something we we're talking about right before we started recording. Jerv was talking about, I guess, in the city of Philly, glassware for drug paraphernalia is banned. Uh, so he's he was he was remarking about how ironic it is that I can get weed wherever but I can't buy a bong. And I said, man, 10 years ago, if I told you that was a trade-off, you would have said, fuck, I don't give a fuck about no bongs. Just give me the weed. So it's funny how the niggas just complain about it. And so I said, yeah, oh, yeah. you said 10 years ago, yo, you get weed wherever, and it's going to be great weed too. And that's where Jerv let me know that he doesn't smoke dispensary weed. So I had two questions. I said, "Don't so let's stop talking now. We'll wait till we're on the record." Two questions, Jerv. One, why not? And two, where do you get your weed from? Uh, uh two, uh, you know, and then from the uh, weed guy. One, from, <laughs> and one is you know it's because of my access. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I don't know how to. So wait, you're getting it. your weed from the <laughs> weed guy. Wait, what do you mean by access? Sir? Do you, it means like he doesn't I mean, need to I, go to a dispensary. Yeah, I don't need to go to the dispensary. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, like, I, don't, I don't need to go to the dispensary. Yeah. Okay, but is it is it uh, medical only or is it recreational for you guys out there? It is medical only, but oh. it's real easy. To, it's it's real, but it's real easy to What's get the, a car. It's like, not recreational easy. in Philly in uh, Pennsylvania. I thought it was recreational. No, it's not. Uh, it's definitely decriminalized or whatever, and yeah. you can you can you can like smoke it obviously for medical reasons or whatever. And but and they don't they don't mess with you anymore, or with it or buy it or if you're smoking it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, it's not. It's not like sweet like it is. And uh, I think like DC, DC, you can. Well, I mean, I know Cali is Cali, but like DC, you can you can actually like, I think like places can actually have like weed cafes and, and stuff like that. Like you can actually like promote smoking weed in an establishment and it'd be okay. Like Philly, you can't do mm. that shit here. Wow. Yeah, not, not, e- not even close. Yeah. So it's weird, but you know, I mean, Hey, we, I've been, I've been functioning, you so know, Jared, I've do, been do you, surviving. Do you, do you have one weed man, like a barber or do you have like multiple like oh, just in case. No, I'm, got I'm a loyal. I'm up. I'm a loyal guy, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, once you got once you got a good system, right? I don't need to go out there just because someone else is promoting, you know, a better offense or something. It's cool. Right. <laughs> you can have fun. You know, I, I like I like the little pick and roll that we got going on over here. You know, no <laughs> no no need no need to go for MVP. You know what I mean? That's I funny as shit, man. So what do you do if, if your man is, is out of town? I'll be all right. <laughs> Even though I feel like oh, we so you treated, so you treated really like a barber, like bro. You treat him like a barber? Yeah. 
That's yeah. I mean, that's yeah. rightfully so, though. You can't smoke with everybody. I mean, I, 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 I got people, I got people that, well, that number one, yes, but I'll, I got people that have cars that, like, if I want other things, I, I like, I'll get stuff from the dispensary. Like, I'll get, like, uh, like a cart or something, or like, I got, I'll get like a lotion because I do, I get, I have a lotion and I got pills also. A you know what I mean? I'll get all that, all that type, yeah, lotion or whatever. What, like, a, is it, it's a weed lotion or is it CBD? Mm -hmm. Is weed? It's, uh, it's, it's a weed lotion, yeah. And so, how, like, uh, so, I never heard of that. How does it, how does it work? Just explain it to me. I mean, I, I just use the lotion wherever it hurts and then, like, it, it's kind of like you feel like a coolant type. <laughs> Wait, what? Type like of fact, yeah. Pot type of thing? Wait, to a degree. Without, without, I think he's talking about CBD, but he's saying it's weed. It's THC. I mean, it, it, it said yeah. it had, I mean, it does have THC in the year. You know the Michael, you know the Michael Jackson gift where the nigga put, said, doing this, doing this to the, the gun. gun? <laughs> That's all I'm gonna tell nigga Jerry, put the weed down, <laughs> nigga doing that. No, nah, bro. No, nah, hey, listen, dog. I got I got a, a bad left knee. It just messes up with the weather, and I refuse, and I got a bad lower back, and I refuse to get surgeries and stuff. So you know, I uh, I try different Why things. Why are you refusing to get surgery? I'm not trying to get no surgery on my back, yo. Like I'm good. Are you? Is it a fear thing? Like you scared it might get more messed up? No, I've had surgery. I've had I've had tons of surgery. Uh huh. What's the, it's what's just that the, the the back the back uh, recovery is 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 just crazy, and, and it's not like a necessary. It's just I can go in and clean some stuff up. Type but thing. it's not you, like would, a, wouldn't you want it to be fixed, like fully fixed? No, nah, because I've been dealing with this since I was like. 13. So like I am good. Like at this point, it's just <laughs> it's just what it is. Like I just nigga it, asked you, what did you want it to be fully fixed? And you said, nah, I've been dealing with this since I was 13. 13. I'm good. Yeah. Right. It's just I, like I would like, think the I, opposite. I know I get a cold when the weather changes. I like I know, like, hey, sometimes, you know, if I stand too long, sometimes I, I gotta start doing the exercises that they showed me to, to you know, to to the stretch, to stretch out the uh the muscle area that needs to be stretched out. I respect it. Hey, we outside. <laughs> so do y'all do y'all have a backup barber? Because I know we was talking about barbers. Oh man, <sighs> I, I do. I used to. Yeah. I, like I'm a actually, honest, I do. Man. I'm lying. Shout out to me. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to me. I, she I, be, I she got, be holding it down. You got a backup oh, barber, oh, me? A woman barber. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Call me misogynistic, man. Yeah, man. It's, <laughs> it's crazy because the white homies are like, you let a dude cut your hair? That's gay. I'm like, what? Like, for real? They said that to you? That, yeah, man. Like, the white people. Oh, yeah. Because they used to go to a, you know, I guess a salon or whatever. But like, stylist, bro. You get the hair yeah. stylist. No, they, yeah. they, they, go, they got the one shop, though. What's well, what that about, shop? Well, what about the. <laughs> it's worse well, what about the old school where it was used to be like the old man with the glasses and he I guess put the, the cream shake that's cream it. on your face like that's the that's the traditional <laughs> yo that's great that nigga that's, that's crazy. <laughs> that nigga had to go like shaving cream I had to, I had to. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that when I think barber especially like American barber like that's what I think of yeah like, I, I don't think I think like that's a generational thing to be honest with you mm. like what you described like the old school but yeah. like people in their like thirties or whatever, yeah, and younger are like, nah, man, like I gotta go, like I, I gotta go to Michelle or or Tanya right. to do my hair or whatever. <laughs> Listen, like, bro. But if I feel you like nice, you, if you nice, you nice. You gonna you go you gonna get me I, but, a pull up. But are they using clip? They don't get lineups though. So like Ooh. they're, oh, you talking about the white dudes? White dudes, yeah. Uh -huh. So so they're going getting their hair cut with scissors. I feel like. They there's some clippers there because they get fades. I don't know if you've heard of the Travis Kelsey. <laughs> they do get fades. I feel like uh, it's a lot more scissory than yeah, than because they do that thing where they hold the hair they, here and then they yeah yeah them. exactly. There's a lot yeah. of that. It's a lot of this. But they'll still <laughs> clean. They'll still clean up down here with a razor though. Yeah, right, right. Because you you gotta have that. Well, I would think they would because you gotta have that option for the for the sensitive skinned individuals. Some people can't have the razor. You know, or do they yeah. not care? They, do they just say? Oh, but I, fuck but I think it. it's a. I, I still think it's like a, like a analog razor. It's not like the electric in my mind. Oh like, yeah, no, no, they got they got clippers. They're not you. They're not using electricity. You hear the <laughs> sound in that barber shop. There's no way that barber shop doesn't have, have a motor way, sound. Have going. you ever? Have you ever had a barber cut your hair with the analog clippers? I don't know if you guys even see, even know they exist. Mm -hmm. It's uh -uh. like you squeeze, you squeeze it like a handle. 
Uh-oh. And then at the top, it's got little blades, and, and that's how it works. Oh yeah, the little the shear, like a little shear, shear it's, thing. It's not like a shear. It look the top of it looks like um like a beard shaver, mm. but the blades aren't moved by electricity. The blades are moved by you working the handle, okay, or by the barber working the handle. Yeah. Uh, I I, I want to go back to Trey having a woman barber and you said hey if you could cut you go how did you know because that's the whole the whole thing about barbers is like you have to have that leap of faith all right let me give it a try so how did you know i mean i'm just looking at the product like it's leaving and you getting see cut. It, right you see yeah, other yeah. people get cut you're like yeah and like, also you know, like if if it was recommended bad, if it was a bad no it's our it's our it's our job barber like, oh okay she, okay she comes in and she does our hair and all that but like clientele she's like hard to book that's the crazy thing wait about is this it. pre or post bald tray either or no i'm asking you specifically <laughs> no i mean this, okay well, either, pre pre so 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 she cut your hair when you was yeah getting, line up and everything okay not like because i was like i just thought about it, you like, also it gotta understand you gotta understand head, too like, i still gotta like a i still gotta line up that's the crazy Do thing you? about it. You know, yeah. Yeah, I don't think yeah, Trey's I fully. Like oh, are you doing? Fully you, got the Kobe, like a, you got the Kobe. I got the Kobe. Though. I've always had the Kobe. 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 I've always had the Kobe. I'm just not trying to drag that shit out. You know what I mean? Like I'm just being realistic. No, nah, nigga, because you always have a hat on, so I don't know. You know. No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I've wore it, and people got mad. Like, yo, you're wasting. Like, like I'm doing the Jada kiss. I'm like, I'm not doing the Jada kiss, nigga. I just know that that time is coming. So. I'm just getting ahead. You're doing a Ray Allen. You're yeah, doing a Ray just, Allen. I'm just showing yeah. up bald, nigga. I still... Kobe is funny because I, I I completely forgot about the fact that Kobe did like pioneer that. He had to blend it. He had to blend it. That ball there, like the, I don't even know. And then it's like, I, it's interesting. Even a lot of NBA players like LeBron, obviously, like what is his haircut? What is what is that? It's not a cut. My, you know what's funny thing about LeBron? <laughs> LeBron's hair never looks good. Like they, like you would think that what fresh out the barber shop that day it'll yeah. look good and then after time you know it grows and it's thinner in some places. Man, that that nigga's hair look always like looks that crazy. Nigga take a fucking blown up balloon across his head and go like this. Like all the top NBA players, actually, now that I think about it, have weird haircuts. Yep. Like even Steph Curry. Steph KD, shit is, is weird. What is that? Yeah, I thought Curry has like the nat- the nappy fro type type thing. That's no, not what he has. Low, it's a it's a lower. It's low. Nap. It's a it's weird lower nap. It's like a, how, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how that's it's possible. Yeah, wave. so I'm saying like, I don't at, even at know that low, it. it's not it's it's to be flat, right? But yeah. like his is still no. Nah, that shit weird, look that shit look like, like when you wear a do rag on your while you got a fro, you going through your ugly stage. Yes, and, you yeah. and it that's keeps how, it down. That's, like, that's exactly yeah. what it looks like. Yep. Right. And then you got the Trey Young. The Trey Trey Young got a weird ass haircut. I don't know. They said his shit looked like a lollipop that fell on the ground and picked up some hair. Right, right. Jalen Jalen Brunson, his yo niggas don't talk about this. Jalen Brunson's hairline is back, bro. That shit is yeah. way back. That nigga's like, hairline is up here. You gotta understand, niggas don't niggas associate hairline with the wrong shit. That's what I've learned over time on the internet. Is niggas be thinking the hairline is the 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 actual hair being lost, right? Niggas be like, oh, what? you're losing your hairline. Hear me out. So niggas would be like. Oh, look at him. Like, no, that's just balding, nigga. That's not a hairline, right? When it comes to, like, a nigga just having a full hell of hair, and yet they never talk about a nigga, like, outside of Derek White. Derek White, the only nigga that I felt like niggas was really cooking. Niggas would not say nothing. They would think that shit normal, like a nigga having a Batman-shaped fucking hair. And like, like the fucking Power Ranger? Like, right now, a nigga would not say only us would talk about your shit. But I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what it is, Trey. You're, you're describing what you're describing is all the white people on the internet. Because if you're black, you know what a hairline is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, but they'll say know. like, but they'll say like, "Yo, your hair." Because like, it's never direct. It's I'm always like, this nigga, bro. I, I, I feel never, like we all. I never met that nigga. I don't know what that life was like. I don't. I I've never like, met that nigga with hair. No matter, no matter what the pod comes back to certain topics, like we always like we back to. <laughs> To like hairline combo, no matter what. I just mixed my hairline, bro. Just, That's all I'm saying. Because of the pod, nigga, the hairline stories is just like going back to high school stories, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> uh, niggas is like nigga. Superman flying across the sky. And shit with the hairline. <laughs> nigga, nigga, swear he put up his best shots, nigga, with hair. I'm trying to think, like, hey. is there, 
NBA what a time. star with like a regular, like what is Giannis's hair? Paul George. Paul George. Oh yeah, Paul George. He Paul has, George has a regular hair. Paul George has to me like yeah, you know, yeah. Paul's Paul George has the perfect hair. No, he's like, got a really nice head of hair. Yeah, that, but oh, like also like there. the perfect that's haircut, there. like no, it's, no, this haircut it's, is good. The it's whole cool. thing, it's yeah. you know, like yeah, because I feel like like Jason Tatum has a strong hairline. He's doing yeah. too much. The whole I'm gonna fade the front and yeah. then let it grow. Up. That's too much. You're doing too much. Yeah. Get out of here. And then um, my Kawhi's hair never grows. Yeah, I don't know. Then why. They, I, I, I then he must get a haircut. He must like when you get it pulled out, it gets trimmed and then. Right, then and then, and then his hairline in the front is yep. like it starts like back. It's a weird, yeah, yeah. No, it's, you're that's right, man. Like who, the is it the NBA sweat? Nigga. Is it the sweat that fucks their hairlines up? No, I just think, man. I just think, yo, people I think it's a lack of good barbers, <laughs> lack of good barbers in this world. Right, yo. I'm now the more I think about it, it's like other than Paul George, name an NBA nigga yeah. with a re- with a regular haircut that looks. Decent, right? I mean, I think Halliburton's cut is like basic. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Like it's a, not. It's not crisp. Yeah, he got like a Devin Booker. Book, yeah, book, book. Devin but book Booker also got, has a little bit of the of the Tatum. It's a lot going. Yeah, it's a lot yeah, going. Yeah. On like, up no, there. Yeah. It's a mix of cuts. <laughs> it's a mix of cuts. Yeah, this like, is me as the light skin expert on the pod, <laughs> just letting you all know. I don't care what they say. There's a lot going on up there. There's a lot. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah, it's crazy, man. The more I think about it, it's like all of them kind of have like something going on that's not just like, yo, just fucking edge me up, fade me up, we're good. Paul right. George, the only one. He might be the only one. That's crazy. So let's let's talk about the, the trade deadline. Yeah, man. The the trade deadline that that wasn't. Like there was not really ah! Like there was no blockbusters, That's but I'm gonna tell you the Knicks and the Mavericks both got a lot better. Yeah, yeah, that PJ Washington trade was actually like pretty and impressive. fucking Daniel Gafford, motherfucking sleeping. I'm telling you right yeah. now, Daniel Gafford. Yeah, he's fucking good, bro. Yeah, and he's exactly kind of the the player that uh that they needed that the yeah. Mavericks needed. So like I thought Dallas did a huge, tremendous job. I thought. The Knicks did a good job. I, I, I had to talk to my Nick fans, my Nick fan friends down, like, yo, the same boy on Bogdanovich that played like in Indiana and was guarding LeBron and shit. Like this thing is old and washed now. Right. But like as an extra shooter, he's decent. Alec Burks, I'm gonna be honest. He has 16 point per game. I've, well, yeah, I've no. never seen Alec Burks play for a good team. Like I always see this nigga put in work for a team that's not good. Well, this is his second stint with the Knicks, right? I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tip. That's Tibbs' guy, though. But I know. I th- I thought the most interesting part of the trade deadline was the statement about Grant Williams <laughs> and Damn. how niggas was like, "Yeah, we had to part ways with that motherfucker. Right? We had to get the fuck up out of here." Yeah, <laughs> oh, bro. No, he he started the season wearing Lucas, and then midway through. Switch to Tatum's. Switch to Tatum. I'm like, what are you? I mean, I get it. You got to be comfortable, bro. Nigga, find something that don't have nobody name on it, or a Boston nigga that, that retired. All Boston right, Boston. here we go. That was pretty obvious, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. I just want to point out during that Bossa Nova, that Jer took a huge bong hit, and when he fucking exhaled there was so much smoke <laughs> that the green screen just decided this thing it doesn't exist anymore so we just got full just screen got him back this is green screen <laughs> and nigga, walked in, nigga walked in like nigga when they first added Thanos to the walkthrough yeah <laughs> <laughs> coming out the smoke <laughs> coming out of the smoke nigga <clears throat> alright yeah so, but, so I thought Dallas helped themselves I thought the Knicks helped themselves I'm surprised. There's a couple teams. I'm surprised. I'm surprised Atlanta didn't do shit. Right. With Dejounte, because su- they were saying Dejounte was on the trading block. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what they're I holding mean, on to. It was it was mixed Why? though. You know, the coach wanted Snyder wanted to keep him. You know, obviously they weren't gonna move Trey Young. Um, and like they're just trying to figure that shit out. They'll they'll revisit it. But also the Lakers really wasn't trying to give up Reeves and. 
They didn't want rough. I hate Russell. when niggas do that. I, yo, I hate when niggas do that. Shit. Well, what hang on a nigga like that ain't even really. Yeah, crazy. I mean, like he, he's like yeah. I like I like Austin Reeves. I think he's a good player. But, but the, I like no. The, but he's not. A, but he's not a nigga to be like yo. He's no, gonna no, change hang the world. On. It's the same shit when the when they were trying to do the uh, the Harden deal to the Clippers and the Clippers were like, we can't give up Terrence. Terrence man. Like, what the fuck about like again? He's a good <laughs> player, but like come on, man. What the fuck we talking about? I'm still about thinking here? about that because I look at like his stats and what he do, and sometimes I'll be like. He's a yeah, decent really, player. That's it. Yeah, like, I really yo, wasn't trying to part with this nigga. I'm going to tell you, the, the only type of player that you don't part with is someone that you say, I can't reasonably find someone who does what he does. Right? right. So Draymond Green, for instance, isn't the Warriors' best player. But, like, there's a part of it is like, I can't trade him because if I trade him, who the fuck is going to do the shit that he does? Fair. But, like, when you see, like, Terrence Mann, Austin Reeves, um, uh, Alex Caruso in Chicago, another motherfucker who should have been traded, but wasn't. It's like, I get it. He's a good player and he helps you, but like, this That's can't be in the get in the way of you like doing doing business, bro. Yeah. So, so what do what do y'all think about Dim Witty to the Lakers? <laughs> yeah, I think it makes a material difference. No, I don't think it changes. No, the I'm damn gonna be. Thing. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest, right? Yeah. And I guess the kind of peel back that layer right of me actually having a conversation with him at, at the garden he was like yo what would you do in a situation and i'm like bro like that's not for me to decide i'm like honestly like yeah. you're from la the dream of any kid in la is to play for the lakers that's one scenario in itself but do you want to back up d-lo do you want to be in a situation where you, are, you want to back up D'Lo again? Again, that that's a whole nother thing. And then also be in a situation where you might actually have a decent year and Laker fans still might not be satisfied with that. And it could be a situation where you're out the league. That's how weird that situation could be. Like, you know, because it sticks. He's not a bad player, but it sticks on some other bullshit of like, God, that nigga trash. And it's like, he still averaged 15, but like niggas be like, nah, I'm cool. Then you got the math situation, which I really thought he was going to lean into because fucking Mark Cuban comes over there and literally just basically offers him something. But you come to the game, bring in attention to yourself to support the bros. And then um, in this particular situation, you know what it is. Mark's like, hey, you know, back up, you know what I mean? You know, back up Luca, you'll play with Kai. And we just got Gafford and PJ Washington. Yeah. So I think you would like take us over the top adding you. And you know the system. You know what I'm saying? J Kidd came over there. Yo, when you sign in, Duds came over there. When you sign in, it's like they personally recruited it. Not saying that the Lakers didn't, because Braun said some nice things about him. AD said some nice things about him. Um, it's it's really kind of those like fall on the sword, live with your decision type thing. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? At the end of the but, day, like but you I don't, don't think it was you don't think that Dallas is already like a very guard heavy team, like and the Lakers are less guard heavy, and he has more opportunity with the Lakers because you know Luca, Kyrie, Tim Hardaway, like. But where, but where would the guard heavy part be if Luca and Kyrie start, and then he's giving Luca a break? He's the first guard off the bench. First guard off the bench, him. and Hardaway's not a lead guard. Hardaway's he's not a more he's not a two. Wing. He's not a, you know I mean he's not a point. So he's a wing. So like. I mean, he would basically be Jalen Brunson before when Jalen Brunson got traded off. The, uh, look, uh, the other thing is, I have I a lot more faith in the Mavericks knowing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like when they say, "Hey, this is how we're gonna play you," I have more faith in the Mavericks, like knowing that shit, versus the Lakers, where it feels like every day that should be switching up. Like, yeah, they no, they might be so thirsty enough to start the nigga, yeah. right? They do some shit like, "Hey, yo, you gonna start?" Niggas like, oh, I thought you was backing up D-Lo. <laughs> right? So niggas doing all the photoshops, all the <laughs> shit. The hype is there. Nigga, nigga wet the bed, right? And you like, damn. Right? Because I already seen it. I seen this movie before. And like the nigga's still going to be playing decent. He probably going to average 10. Decent. That shit ain't enough in the Lakers shit. That shit ain't enough. Well, I, I think it's all going to matter when it comes to the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what's really gonna you talking about him not playing in the league anymore 
Like, I think that's all going to be determined in the playoffs, whether he was on the Lakers or and that's, and that's like or a the tough Mavericks. shot because your career shouldn't be decided off of that. <laughs> but he got he kind of got just but he kind of got Philly, spun bro. out though. He kind of got, got Lowry, spun bro. out because he, he got he he was on a lot of the wrong teams at the wrong time. He was scoring Ooh. a lot of empty points. What do you mean? I'm talking about Spencer Dinwiddie. So you think like this is life changing? No, I'm saying like. His career has gone on an unfortunate trajectory for him. Like he's been a pretty decent player, but he was on the Nets at weird times, both times. He was on the Mavs at a weird time. Like, so his like he hasn't had a lot of success for the amount of like that he's shown on the yeah. court. Like he's done a lot of good things on the court, but he hasn't had a lot of success in the NBA. You feel me? So it's it's yeah, kind of I don't, I don't know what it's kind of reflecting like poorly on him when he hasn't really been an author of any of it. So now he's kind of close to the last stop, which isn't his own doing, but like, that's the way he's viewed as a player. Like, I'm just trying to tell you like how I think it's, you know what I'm saying? It's seen objectively. But yeah, I'm going to just disagree on that shit. Cause I'm just looking at it from a perspective. Well, you just said, like, you just said that you think this could possibly be his last stop. You just said that. Absolutely. No, but I'm just talking right. about the last stop as not as like, this was not a good choice. Like, bro, like, what the fuck are you doing? But you got to sometimes, it's like telling a kid, hey, don't jump off of that. You're going to get hurt. And the kid do it anyway. And they just like, sometimes you got to, you know what I mean? Like, that was the thing. I was like, Yo, you got to, everybody lie anyway. Everybody, you got to figure that shit out on your own. So he rather live with the situation to actually say, you I played for the Lakers one time in my career. And that's okay. Whether the consequences may be in the bad part of him not getting a long-term fucking payout. You know what I'm saying? They right. might trade his ass in the summer with those three picks. You never know at the end of the day, but that's the shit you got to live with versus Dallas. It was more of a long-term situation. You know what I mean? Like, no, I feel that. I feel that was that. a crib. Like they was going to like, yeah, they was going to show up. It got a little bit more money to, right. to find a home, which most NBA players at his point in his career are looking for. Right. That's why I was saying, I'm like, niggas can either love you or hate you in the next couple weeks. Right. It's up to you. So, we'll see. It you know, because D-Lo, D-Lo confidence is cracking right now. I don't know. No, D-Lo been balling. Now he's back. He's back now. Yeah. He a dog. He's back rolling. So, it's rolling for sure. That's, but the thing about the Lakers is that we all know it's a ceiling on that team. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like as much like cool shit that they could do in the regular season. Oh, they're going to beat the the odd Celtics or, you know, obviously the Nuggets got our number, but, you know, the Suns and whoever else, like the other good teams in the league. But when it comes to the playoffs, if we run into the wrong team, like the Nuggets or some shit, I think we could kind of, I think we could take the Clippers. Clippers for sure. I'm going to tell you something. Clippers Clippers for sure. The Clipper, I don't think, I don't know, man. I think L.A. sometimes, L.A. people, y'all are a bit jaded about this. You don't understand, man. The Clippers, regardless of how good or bad they are, them niggas basically over the last five years, every time they play the Lakers, it's beat like they eat their spinach. It's not, like, it's not just they beat their ass. It, you could tell these niggas are going hard. Like, so well, we, I mean, we just won the last game that we played. I know you won the last one, but I, I think you've lost 30 out of 35 or <laughs> yeah, something. No, no, no. Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. No, it ain't been good. It ain't been good. But again, they usually don't make it to meet us in the playoffs. We sure. get further than them. Jason so. had checked the scoreboard ass nigga. I'm just <laughs> Look at the I'm scoreboard, saying. nigga. Like we won a title. A rivalry? We're not a rivalry. Yeah. Exactly. Like, so it's like all those regular season wins don't matter. The Clippers are not a team that shows up in the playoffs. But I, I guess, this, I guess, yeah. See, this this is what I'm talking can, about, like can, Los, Los Angeles people. Are they? The, but I'm saying, are, are, are you going to tell can, me can this is the year you? that the Clippers, are you going to be one of those people? Nigga, they, they're great this year. Like, I don't, like I don't, this. this is awesome. The, you know what I'm saying? Like, Jay's like, I get what you're saying, but also, like, you can't just you can't just look at it like ah I don't fuck it up somehow like you gotta be realistic like the niggas they look amazing That's you like, asking for a lot right now on me asking for niggas to be realistic Laker fans being realistic no nigga no but as but as somebody who's watched like the boy who cried wolf <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying like you've seen but they've this never movie. been this good. but Jason they've never been this good right so it's just like never. Again, it's, it's the uh, but to me, it's just a boy who cried wolf because it's like 
We're going to have another time <laughs> where the Bills go to the Super Bowl. Yo, they're they're going to win this time. Yo, I, lo- it's like, I, lo- yo, I love this sure. dude, yo. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yo, this I is love you. This yeah. is hey, you know, who, you know who might be worse than this nigga, though? Wells. Wells. Oh, no, yeah. oh my God. That nigga Wells. He be like, he was talking shit about the stadium. I'm like, yo, bro, let the, the stadium, stadium. Was fire. The stadium was fire. Yeah, hard, bro. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's that's a real hater right there. That's a real hater. That shit, nigga said, bro. all them niggas got his bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> that's some hate oh, ass shit, man. <laughs> yo, the hate be so real, dog. I mean, I guess. <laughs> excuse me. I oh. guess for the Nets too. That's the same shit in New York, nigga. Them niggas could do whatever, nigga. Yeah, the dog, Knicks is, it is the Knicks, absolutely bro. the same shit. That's what I'm saying. I'm sure all of the people who like the Nets or whatever or was watching basketball was like, oh, man, the Nets, they about to do some blah, blah, blah. But it's like niggas who live in New York probably know the same shit. Like, bro, nigga, y'all can Knicks have fan, Henry. Knicks fans oh, hold on. me. Niggas can't really Jaylen say Brooklyn. but so much anyway, though. Like, it's not like hey, they yeah. out here just fucking... Chipping up no, and shit. For sure, for hey, sure. Nick's man right. telling me Jalen Brunson better than Kyrie right now, bro. Oh hey. no, dog. You, that you think that's like a an isolated thing? A Nick's fan? Them niggas believe that shit. But I, in the last week alone, I've gotten Jalen Brunson better than Kyrie. Jalen Brunson better than Tatum. He Jalen Brunson KD too. He uh, he'll be the he, he the greatest athlete to ever fucking touch New York he's, basketball. He's, bro, he's on his way. Me. Honestly, he's on his way. I, I'm wondering the how machine long gonna build that nigga, but the the burn gonna be fucking nasty. That, that's the shit I'm worried oh, about, Trey. Because bro, like they right had this now, nigga on the on the fucking talk show, bro, Jason. Dog, he went on fucking was it Fallon, bro? Oh, bro. <laughs> no, bro, it's, I'm, I'm t- uh, uh, first time off started Jason, going Fallon. Yeah. It's crazy. Jason, yeah. I'm telling you right now, uh-huh. these niggas on a pr- trajectory to like, w- if this shit continues for a couple of years mm-hmm. of them being good and him playing like this. They're gonna be here. like greatest Knicks of all time: Patrick Ewing, Walt Frazier, Jalen Brunson. I, <laughs> yeah. It's it's going I that way. Not. I kid you not. The, the shit that he did I against lied. Indiana a couple <laughs> yeah. weeks ago, where yeah. he got hit in the face and they didn't call it, and then yeah. he came back and had to end one and sort of. The, it was like Jesus came out of the fucking cave and shit. Listen, These niggas, Jason, like, oh, <laughs> he is risen. This is how this this is how this shit is, right? If right. you put on a Knicks uniform, and even if you it wasn't your responsibility, and a nigga traded you off. Yeah. But you played hard during that little fucking three months or whatever you was yeah. on. You're good for life. Wow, this nigga for Wilson. Sure. This nigga Wilson got traded in fucking 2011. 2011 yeah. for Melo, right? Yeah. This nigga ain't been back to the garden, nigga, since he got traded, nigga. Outside of like like coming back to visit, so niggas is like, oh, once a nick, always a nick. Dog, you would have swore this nigga want a chip. I'm like what? crazy, man. I'm like, like, bro, if, he... like that's the thing about Brunson. It's like you're right, Trey. Any blue collar, hardworking ass player, them niggas will love you for life. But then, like, take a blue collar, hardworking player and make him the best player on the team and oh make the God. team good. Like now, this nigga's like, like superpowers, right? That's like, what I'm saying. If if that nigga gets to the, I seen a nigga finals, crying, bro. When this nigga it, looked that it, way, it, like oh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> If the Knicks get to the conference finals, I couldn't, bro. I couldn't believe that shit, Jason. I literally walked through the tunnel to get to my seat, my nigga. It's yeah. a grown man crying that got a glimpse of this nigga in his street clothes. Yeah. I said. It's a real fandom. No. Ain't no. <laughs> bro, Walt Frazier don't get that, nigga. Earl the Pearl don't get that. We did. We interviewed Earl the Pearl, nigga. Like, yeah. niggas ain't even acting like that. But this nigga. This is first All Star, not his third. Julius Randle didn't even get this love, and Julius Randle no, they two three times, nigga. But y'all say Philadelphia fans are delusional. Knicks fans are way more delusional. Oh, for sure, without a doubt, way more, nigga. Like that's you know, okay, bossing over this, and we're black. Yeah, so that's the point there, Jeff. Don't take too much pride in that in that (laughs) statement. But yeah, man, like it's it's weird because it legit has been a long time. I would say the Knicks haven't been this good since goddamn Spreewell in Houston. Like, I know, Houston. Yeah, I know they won a division with Melo at one year and they got the second round loss to the like that team wasn't as good as this. Okay, so so what about this though, I mean? Say niggas done poured all they bags, all they shit in the bags, right? And niggas get a first round exit. See, I okay, so this is what I think right now. I think right now, if they lose in the first round. 
they're gonna blame everybody but Brunson. They'll blame yeah, even if Brunson plays bad. Need a new Bron. <laughs> yeah. So so what's gonna happen is it'll, this. Be, it'll if, be Randall's fault. If he played bad, well, first of all, they'll blame Randall. Second of all, if Brunson plays bad, they'll blame Tibbs. He's tired. You wore his ass out. You're playing 45 minutes in these regular season games and shit like that. So I don't right now. I think Brunson is Teflon. Safe. He's There's, safe. This year for sure. There's nothing he can do. He could play like shit in the playoffs and they'll find a way to make excuses for him. Next year, if they're good and then they shit the bed in the playoffs, I think they're going to start saying, what are they going to need more help? <laughs> That's what they'll say then. <laughs> You think he's protected for the rest of his career? Not for I think like it, you like here's the thing. So let's say this. If next year they're good and he plays great in the playoffs, but everyone else plays like shit, he's definitely protected. Kick it down the line. If it, the, as long as he plays good, they're never gonna talk shit about it. We got him. niggas saying positive things about Josh Hart right now. What you mean? Like, Josh Hart is, you Josh know why? Josh he played hard. He played hard, bro. He gonna be the greatest Nick. He gonna be beloved more than Charles Oakley, nigga. At one John point, Starks. John Starks. Josh Hart is gonna oh be like God. the new John Starks. The new <laughs> John Starks is fucking crazy. I like. I like. I like him. Even Dante DiVincenzo. I just was watching a roster, just looking like you got a bunch of niggas that just play hard as shit, and niggas love them. That's all uh, you gotta oh, do is show up and get tired, nigga. All the all the here, <laughs> show up and get tired. Of <laughs> Let's show up and get tired, nigga. Play as hard as you fucking can. <laughs> um, oh, what? No, I was just gonna say, like, all all the all the blue collar. First of all, all the Villanova niggas, they're golden because they play hard and they play the right way. Yeah, they're not gonna never do nothing crazy like Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson, if niggas got eliminated, he'd cry. He'd cry and niggas would eat that shit up. So nigga cried at the All Star selection. That nigga niggas over there MVP. That nigga was like, I'm my like, nigga, my, my niggas. I'm my like, yo, this is a cool MB moment. And B cried when he lost. Oh, <laughs> that's fair, but, but niggas not gonna cry. Niggas don't ain't gonna do that. They gonna say that's a beautiful moment. Cause he really wants to win. Look at that fucking guy. That's our guy. He's like, <laughs> he's like they're Rocky. <laughs> Oh my God! I do got them going Eastern Conference Finals though. That's not winning, say, like, but I got them I going deep. I got them going deep. I, pause. Pause. Um, man, I, y'all want to talk about the the Grammys? Yes. Uh, fucking Killer Mike, dog. I ain't listen to that shit. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. And Are I'm not. But I'm not. Mike I'm not taking. But I'm, yeah, and that album was actually fire. Fire. I, yeah, fire. I don't, think, yeah. I don't think niggas have to put the actually in it. It's like it's fire, but I just no. I I, I, I said actually it. just because I, I saw how everyone reacted to it as if it was like like it's crazy that that you could even say like that this album was the best album when it was like it was dope. I fuck with her loss though, man. Oh, heavy. But I my fuck question... with her loss, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Totally, to you. totally understand, and I and I can understand if you feel like another album. I always can understand if you feel like another album should be the album of the year as opposed to the album that was selected. I get that, but the reaction that this album seems to have gotten was like, "Yo, this is crazy! Like, how the fuck is this album uh, album of the year?" And I don't really feel like everybody really listened to it. No, I still haven't listened to it. I, I never listened it. to it. <laughs> I'm, but my, I'm also one of my homies. I never will. Really good album. One of my never homies directed a, a video for it too, and I still haven't listened to it. Um, but partially because <clears throat> I've been off Killer Mike, uh, and I know, like, I don't know if y'all seen the video with uh, Tina Fey this week where she was talking about um, the whole AO shit and how she was talking, like. Talking about Jennifer Lopez. Nah. Okay. Well, this is just a roundabout way of talking about the fact that me talking about Killer Mike or talking about artists, like, it's very sensitive in these days and time to, like, criticize niggas because, like, you never know when you might have to link with a nigga or work with a nigga or do something, you know? So it's like, I don't want to be on podcasts like over criticizing niggas especially like niggas in my field like athletes is a little different but i'm gonna say this though 
because I would say this to this man's face. Like, the shit when the George Floyd protest was happening and bro was on some, like, cop shit. I guess his pops was a cop and he was telling niggas, oh, don't burn this whatever down and don't do this and don't do that. And he was crying on stage with the white politicians and shit. And, like, a lot of bro's politics, like, be on some, like, semi- conservative, Republican, like, just views, you know? And, you know, he he couches it in, like, oh, I'm from the South, so it's like, this is how we are. But I still, like, fuck with Black businesses and all this shit. And it's like, even the part of him that fucks with the Black businesses, like, the Crip Cola shit was corny. Like, a lot of the shit he does is not fly to me, you know what I'm saying? And be actually counterproductive to what niggas is really trying to do. But it's because he speaks with intelligent language, and that's really what I wanted to get to. Like, niggas are susceptible to niggas who talk and speak well. You know what I'm saying? Niggas are easily susceptible to any type of smooth language. And so I just don't follow shit blindly. Like, I listen to what niggas say. And that should turn me off, bro, a long time ago. So like, that's why mom, I'm actually listening to his music. His mom's a cop, right? If I'm not I think, mistaken. I think his dad is a cop. His mom might be a cop too. Like, Shout out to Killer Mike, bro. Yeah, but, he's got he's got like family that's like, and not just a regular cop, like like a chief of police or some some yeah. shit like that. Yeah, like high up, high ranking police yeah. officer. Yeah, so for sure. I shout, shout out to Killer Mike, but like niggas the not about to really twist my arm. Though. Listen, niggas not about to twist my arm to listen to the album. First of all. If it ain't for me, I don't listen to Jid. I don't listen to fucking. Um, you don't listen big, to Jid? You don't, you don't, don't like listen, Jid? I don't listen to Jid. I have no problem with tight. them. I don't know if it's I don't tight have no that. problem with, bro. I don't listen to Jid. I don't <laughs> listen to fucking Killer Mike. I don't listen to fucking um, Big Crit. It's mad niggas. I just don't be pressing play on. But they probably, they respectfully, they're where they're supposed to be. I just, they're not for me. You know what I mean? But I shouldn't be like, damn, nigga. Like, you know what I mean? Because I'm not, I'm not slandering them. I just think they're just not for me. So, like, Despite bro winning the the Grammys, rightfully so, I'm not a vote. I'm just a I'm a consumer of the art. So like I'm I mean, not like I guess tell you like it's bad or not. I guess that, I really to me, loved her loss. To, so to me, this is the thing that 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 I say right. Like when it comes to the Oscars, if you like movies, you can appreciate movies, even if like that's your, your favorite genre might be comedy. But you could watch a drama and be like, oh, I see how like that shit was well acted and well written or whatever. It's easy to appreciate different genres of movies. So as a voter, I might be a voter who's a, a producer or a writer or whatever. And, and my shit is that I'm into is like action movies. But I can watch fucking Schindler's List and be like, yo, that's just a fucking fire movie. I don't understand how musically like how because it's like i feel like the genres of music are way more segmented than for any other for the emmys or for the tonys or for the oscars like yeah there's no way someone who comes from country music is going to tell me killer mike actually had a better rap album than fucking you know uh uh, drake and 21 like how the fuck do you know like what are you listening for what do you appreciate what are the things that that are like Do you understand what is valued within this art space? Because this art space is so different from that of country, from that of rock and roll, from that of opera, gospel, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why, like, to me, the the Grammys are the least, like, the award show that we should pay attention to the least, really. But But but, Needle uh, does this move also. But also, I mean, to, to your point, the thing about the Grammys and the Oscars that they have in common is that more often than not, something is... Uh, selected as the winner because of the ideology it represents and mm-hmm. not the actual content of what is good or entertaining or right. well crafted. Like, it's like, oh, this year we're, ce- you know, we're supporting- celebrating women. Celebrating- exactly. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Blacks, gays, whatever, the, whatever yeah. the thing is at the time. And so it's like, if you fall into that wheelhouse in that year at that time, you win. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's just what it is. Then on the other side, I agree with your point so much so that I don't understand why the Grammys don't have, and you know, it can extend to whoever, but like people like Future, Metro Boomin, Drake, like 
All these people should be voting for the Grammys. I don't think that most of these niggas are voting for a Grammy. No, no. And that and that's the thing that's like that's really you know to your point is disturbing to me. Like the Grammys should be segmented like the Olympics. Like the people who yeah. are specialists, like you should take two hundred or five hundred or thousand, whatever the number is, people from that culture and have them be the main voting body on for that, that. Genre, for that for that genre. genre. Yep. Right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, you can have it another 20 or 30 percent represented by the overall to have their input but the main voting body should be represented by the people in that genre and the fact that they don't do that makes the whole shit weird like uh, I, so i'm looking it up right now who won the grammy for world music the tyler one did she win she won I, she won one grammy for like some kind of i thought it was like the global best. music Global, global music yeah because like I, I like in my in my i'm like if it's not someone doing afro beats then it's like right like, <laughs> right like, what well, are we? were y'all paying attention but again like if it's just a bunch of people who like yeah man like i fucking toured with led zeppelin back in the day like that the voters someone like that how could they ever understand yeah because i remember like back in the day now I think Robert Plant came out with some shit and he ended up winning a bunch of awards, like maybe even album of the year. And he was like in his late sixties or some shit. You know, there was a bunch of other popular music at the time. And one of the big, you know, arguments for the Grammys this year was like, obviously Taylor Swift won album of the year. Beyonce didn't win the previous year, but you know, Scissors, a lot of people felt like Scissors should have won. But if you look back, bro, there's not been a, other than Stevie Wonder, I think like a real traditional R&B artist has never won album of the year. And this same thing can be said for rap because even though uh, Speaker Box Love Below won, that's not a traditional rap yeah. album. And so through the whole course of raps and R&B's history, where you have all these legendary acts, there has never been one traditional album in that category that has won album of the year, which is... So like crazy. I'm, looking, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm going to start, obviously, from this year and move backwards. Album of the year. Oh, fuck, man. This is a long-ass list. All right. <laughs> so this year, Taylor Swift, as you pointed out. Last year, 2023, Harry Styles. <laughs> the year before that, John Batiste, We Are. Don't know what that is. Oh, yeah, John that, Taylor, He's Taylor black. Swift. Uh, but that's what is what is his music? I don't, I don't know what his genre. It's like a I don't know, folk pop spiritual. Is it like that? Amen, amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take me to church. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, 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 that's the genre. That's the genre. Okay. <laughs> uh, twenty twenty, <laughs> Billie Eilish. Twenty nineteen, Casey Musgraves. Twenty eighteen, Bruno Mars. That's more pop though, right? Yep, yep. 2017, Adele. 2016, Taylor Swift. 2015, Beck. 2014, Daft Punk. 2013, Mumford and Sons. 2012, Adele. 2011, Arcade Fire. 2010, Taylor Swift. 2009, Damn. Robert Robert Plant. I told you, Robert Plant. Won. That nigga was like 70-something, son. How yeah. you winning album of the year, dog? He beat out Radiohead. <laughs> Little Wayne, Coldplay, and Neo. That Neo album was crazy. Uh, 2008, Herbie Hancock. 2007, Dixie Chicks. 2006, U2. 2005, Ray Charles. Damn. 2004, Outcast. But as you said, that was kind of not normal. 2003, Nora Jones. 2002, Old Brother, Where Art Thou soundtrack. 2001, Steely Dan, really? 2000, <laughs> Santana. Two th 1999, Lauren Hill. But Lauren Hill would be the last time. The last person, yeah. Like, I actually. And even yeah. that, like, you could say, like, that's not. That's more like speaker that's, box up below. It's a, Exactly. That's my point. Exactly. All right, it's going back. <laughs> 98, Bob yeah. Dylan. 97, Celine Dion. 96, Alanis Morissette. Although she should have won that shit. 95, Tony Bennett. 94, Whitney Houston. Bodyguard pop, soundtrack. Pop, 
Okay. It's, it's R&B, but it's pop. It's okay. not. Eric, like, Eric clapped. Oh, here we go. Natalie Cole, 1992. Okay. That might be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> No, Dream. Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey never won album of the year. No. Nope. What the fuck? That's what I'm saying, bro. It's just crazy. Like it's really crazy. Boys and Men never won album of the year. No. Mm. Like none of the none of the great R and B artists who really was putting out fire ass R and B albums in the nineties. No, I'm no about to blow your mind with another one. <laughs> Michael Jackson has only one album of the year. No, I know. Ridiculous. What? Yeah. It's crazy. What the hell? Y'all put, y'all gonna get Taylor Swift five of the bitches? Are you gonna my man Mike one? That's why. Yeah. That's why glasses was getting it off. Even that's why I glasses there, was getting it off. I think there was a year where uh, Prince and I think eighty eight Prince and Mike both had albums. Sign of the Times, I think bad, and neither one of them won. Yeah, that was eighty. Yeah, they lost to U two, the Joshua Tree. Oh, yo, the fact that U two and Titans. Taylor Swift have <laughs> multiple albums of the year. Should tell you everything about the voters. So she's got the most, there. right? Yeah, she's got the yeah. most. So uh, Stevie Wonder has three. Um, so I would I would ask you guys to pick one if you can think about one of both, one R and B album and one rap album that you would have given album of the year to. That's easy. My beautiful. Uh... Dark Twisted Fantasy, 2010. Yeah. Hold yeah. on, let me see what 2010. <laughs> that was Taylor Swift. I, 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 yeah. like, I, I don't give a fuck what was out. It what it well. It would have been Beyonce, 2011. Beyonce, I am Sasha Fierce was that. Uh, so I'm gonna respectfully. Oh, oh she yeah, respectfully. Oh, she, <laughs> she no, won this was, no, no, she didn't win. Did she win? She lost. She, she lost. lost. Yeah, Beyonce yeah. never won. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you said my beautiful, I would say I'd take Beyonce's album over that. Okay. Then R&B. That's cool, but it's better than whatever the fuck won. The Taylor Swift uh, shit. R and B. How about every Michael Jackson album that didn't win? <laughs> right. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got no, a you controversial. You tell me, fucking. Hold on. You tell me, neither bad nor fucking off the wall one album of the year. The fact that off the wall didn't win is crazy. What won that year? That had to be what, what 1980? 79 or 80? Trey, do you have a, a rap and R&B album that you wasn't would've... even wasn't even nominated, my nigga. <laughs> it wasn't even nominated, my nigga. I don't play the I don't play the I don't play the Grammys games, bro. Hold on. But I'm saying, do you have an album that you that you think <laughs> yeah, like, stood the test of time is the greatest thing. greatest rap album or R&B album that you like, man? If Yo, I was Hold on. I, let, I let, can't let, say that nigga name, but honestly, fuck it. R. Kelly, tp2.com, nigga. Greatest of all. Yo, time. that's why I said I got a controversial one. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, if we no bullshit pulling all the stops, R. Kelly, nigga, tp2.com. Hold on. The greatest so, album of all time. Nigga. It was off the wall, was released in 1979. Mm. Yeah. So in, in 1980, these were the nominees Billy Joel, 52nd Street. The Doobie Brothers, Minute by Minute. Kenny Rogers, The Gambler. Super Tramp, Breakfast in America. And then Donna Summer, Bad Girls. Look, man. <laughs> if y'all were going to have... Who's this, this year? This, is, this was 1980. This is the year off no. the wall. Okay, off the wall. Okay, sorry. So, like, no disrespect to Donna Summer. But if we have a one black album... <laughs> it can't be fucking Donna Summer. What the fuck y'all talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> Trash. Dog, it must have killed them to give them Thriller. They must have. Oh, yeah. oh, why? <laughs> like, they why does he keep making great music? Yeah, like, no, we don't want to do it. All right, so my my two, um, I actually have quite a few. So my two uh, for rap. Well, yeah, I have a few actually, but rap. I think one, the blueprint. Come on, like two thousand one. I don't know what won that year. Or two thousand two. I look up the two thousand one. Two thousand. Or it would have been two thousand two. Two thousand two. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand two. These were the nominees. You two, big shocker there. Uh, <laughs> Bob Dylan, Outcast with Stanconia, India Ari, Acoustic Soul. <laughs> Oh. And the and the winner was Oh Brother Where Art Thou yeah. soundtrack. soundtrack. I was about to it's fight crazy. you on on this Wait. one. Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack. What's that? Yeah. 
the movie. Remember the movie, yeah, the, Old Brother, the, where I thought with uh, Clooney? Yeah, the Coen Brothers movie. Oh, my God. So <laughs> I was about to fight you, Jason. I was like, ah, I don't think Blueprint should have won a, a Grammy. But then when I see that fucking indie re with him and them and him and them 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 you had, you had that removed, as a neo soul. <laughs> I removed the roof, nigga. Let the sun shine and get the fuck out of here. And and then to lead into the last topic, I got two R&B albums. I'll say one, D'Angelo Voodoo, and then the other one. I feel like it should have been super obvious. Confessions. Come oh on. yeah. Come on, like yeah. how did that not win album of the year? Because that shit didn't have on, that shit didn't it, have oh my god on it. It lost to Ray Charles. <laughs> <laughs> like. Come on. Yo, like, honestly, yo, I, I'm going to be real. This, I'll tell you why I didn't win album of the year. This might have been, of me just scrolling, obviously. I haven't done the deep math, but this might have been the toughest fucking field ever. Listen to this. So Ray Charles won it. I think he had just died, by the way. He had just died, yeah, yeah. Right? And yeah. the movie had just come out, too. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, his, you got that. His, yeah, yeah. But listen to the other nominees. Green Day, American Idiot. Fire album. Fire album. Mm-hmm. Kanye West, the college dropout. <sighs> mm. Peter. Usher Confessions and then Alicia Keys, The Diary of Alicia Keys. Oh, they was letting niggas run wild in 2004. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, that's a lot of niggas in that show. <laughs> they was letting niggas go. Cook... But four out of five, of the, like. Who won it? Uh, Ray, Charles. Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Yeah. Ray Charles. I mean, oh, yeah, but that, that's, I mean, that's every that's one of those. I'm like, that's and those a are all great, And they're all great albums for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I, well, actually, I don't know much about the Ray Charles album, to be quite honest. I, don't I mean, it's Ray Charles. It's got, it's I'm pretty sure he didn't put out no trash. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in 04, that's the other crazy thing. It's like a lot of these um, awards, you know. Like, Get Richard Die Trying, bro. Would be there you go. Album. Nah, there you go. Look. 2002? What was that 2002? Three. 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 So that would have been the 2004 yeah, award? Yeah, so 2004 it would have been a 2000. It would have been 2003 awards. Oh, 2003 awards? Okay, yeah. so 2003, Nora Jones won. That bitch was everywhere back then. She was fire at that point. She, she and, I don't even know who that is. Nora Jones? What? Come you away with Nora me. Jones, that, bro. that was the joint. You, she's Ooh. on a, She's on um, motherfucking Love Below. Yep. Take, Nora take Jones. off your cool. You don't know that song? Yeah, but I'm not. You I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't have knew who she was. She's thinking. like one of. She one of them. Like, said, you, don't, you don't know that song. You don't know yeah, that song. Bitches. That's cap. That's cap. Yeah, you, you <laughs> absolutely know her. You like like Nora Jones, not, but but nigga. it's like if you I'm said you, that shit, I would only know it because of "Take Off Your Cool." <laughs> that's the only thing that rung my bell, nigga. I'm not. <laughs> Not niggas be thinking I'll be lying about no, this no. shit. Niggas, but Trey, like, don't I, you, people. no, but Trey, you know how it is sometimes. You, like, I've never heard of that. And then they play it like, oh, I know that shit. That's what yeah. I'm telling you. It would well, be no, like I'm that. just talking about the name. I don't know who no. that is. Niggas did this you, shit to me the other day. I mean, who? Yesterday. Sean White. Right? I know Sean no. White, the name. The skateboarder? Yes, the, nigga, the extreme yeah. nigga, the snowboarder yeah. nigga, right? He skateboarder. But this nigga, yeah, yeah. it was a both. random. Both. Listen, it was a random white boy nigga walking the red carpet on Super Bowl shit. My mm-hmm. nigga doing the, the red carpet shit. He like, hey, who is that? I'm like, shit, I don't know. Niggas over here. So you don't know who Sean White is? The nigga done cut his hair. I ain't oh, seen no. nigga. I ain't hair. heard the nigga. I ain't heard the nigga name in like hella yeah. long. I ain't you gotta lie to you. Yeah, no, no, no. Sean, Sean White, White, if you don't walk, have Sean White, could walk by me right now in New York, Wait, nigga. I you don't have know. like the big ass red hair. Nah, on. he got the little, nah, got the little cut. cut. Yeah. I'm sorry, cut. nigga. Like That's like if Carrot Top came through mm. with a Caesar. Like I, I literally know. use that as an example, nigga. I said Carrot Top buff is a motherfucker now. I don't even know that, nigga. It's because niggas bro, got red hair. I just don't be paying attention to famous white people, bro. <laughs> we couldn't even name the what's the name chick, uh, Jason. Me and Wilson could name um old girl from Law and Order. I know her face. That's it. The main girl. From what? Ice T? On the ice yes. Yeah, What's her name? her name? I don't know her. That's what I'm saying, nigga. Liz? Okay. You mean Liz from Law and Order? Yeah. Is that Olivia? Her name? Olivia? I don't know. Olivia. I don't know. Oh, that's Mariska. her name on the show. That's Yeah, that's her name on the show. Mariska uh, Hargate. <laughs> nigga, I didn't know I that. Know. I seen but, that woman. I said, that's old girl from, from Law and Order. I, I think Law and Order. But see, that's, that's it. See, See that's, that's, that's cool. That's a, that's you recognizing her. I don't. Yeah, think that means you know who she is. Yeah, yeah. That's, but that's why. I'm, but I'm saying the same shit. If niggas was like, 
kept saying Nora Jones, Nora Jones, Nora Jones. Like, I would not, but I listen to fucking Take Off and Cool. I listen to Love Below all the fucking time. I still don't be looking at credits like, oh, yeah, nigga. That was Nora Jones, nigga. <laughs> no, I, that's, a, that's what I, I meant. I meant, I meant you Shout know. Shout out to her, though. Shout out to her. I mean, you her. know who she is because you know her work in the same way that you know, you know Law & Order, chick. You see her like, oh, there go Law & Order. Like, yeah, you know she been, she but, but she been in her role for so long. Like, it ain't like a nigga just unvived her. You feel me? Like, nigga. If it was a new Olivia, like, I'd be like, oh, shit, that's the new Olivia. But, like, she been there for, like, nigga, as long as I've been alive, nigga. Yeah, You know man. what I'm saying? Nah, I mean, like, I mean, like that's that's the thing. It's like, I just don't be, you know what? I just don't no, be paying attention to white people like that, because bro. Because sometimes it's, like, motherfuckers that are legit, like, so Casey Musgraves is a name that I've heard because she won a Grammy. I've never heard a second even know of her music. I don't know what she looked like, but I, I definitely, she could be black. I remember, I'm I remember she's Twitter, not, I remember but, Twitter was hyping that shit. And I was like, all right, I'm going to fuck with it. That's the only reason why I know because Twitter, like, how I know somebody is if a nigga keep mentioning it and they're, like, forcing this shit. By the way, that year Nora Jones won, these were the other nominees. Eminem, the Eminem show. Sure he won, definitely huh? wasn't going to win. He was too controversial. Yeah, I but I'm mean. just saying, like, you're saying that Get Rich, this is what they would have gone against. Nah, Dixie Chicks, Home. Nelly, Nellyville, and in a complete upset, can't believe this nigga didn't win. Bruce Springsteen, The Rising. Oh, not man, because I thought that album was fire or not, but because I thought the voters were just like Bruce Springsteen. Oh. Nelly's album won like Diamond, right? Nellyville, yeah, that one won fucking. No, that one's speaking that one of Diamond, diamond right? fucking Swaley and Post Malone just went double, double diamond. diamond. I didn't even know what that Most... shit was fucking possible. What? Yeah, what the crazy. fuck? Who the yeah, fuck is that, listening to that flower. song? That, that song, song is hard. good. It's great but song. double diamond is fucking nuts. Yeah. Kids How is that possible? It. Just all the streams? Streams yeah, probably. I Kids probably just playing it on repeat. That yeah. fucking Spider-Man movie, man. Yeah, yeah. That's Spider-Man. That's probably the best placement you possibly could do. Absolutely. A nigga throw no, you not. in a Marvel shit or something that a nigga really love. A geek yeah. nigga probably be going crazy playing oh, streaming the game yeah. to that shit. 30 I hours straight. I need a Marvel placement. I, I, moment of moment of vulnerability. Yeah, you said Sway Lee, and in my head, my brain heard Murphy Lee, and I was like, <laughs> yes, "This nigga came back shout and had a track with Post Murph. Malone." Shout out, Murph, shout out to Murphy Lee, nigga. Yeah. Shout, shout out to Murph. Murph. Shout out to Murphy Lee. But yeah, that would be a crazy comeback, though. Murphy Lee featuring fucking Post Malone. I'm, I'm Grand, ready for it. Grandpa, Grand tight, nigga. I was all Yo, about the I saw, St. Louis niggas. I saw brother. a clip of uh, Young Buck interviewing Steve O. And I was just like, <laughs> God damn, man. Like, every, first of all, everyone's got a podcast. Like, what the mm-hmm. hell? Young Buck got a, he got a Cash Bill podcast. But then he Are you fucking Steve-O. kidding me? I'm dead serious, bro. It's called Shout Cash Bill. Shout out to Young Buck. And he was, he was interviewing him shit. about being on the G Unit mixtape. Because remember, Steve O was on the G Unit mixtape? Mm hmm. And he said, like, I didn't even know who these people were. They were just giving me names, and I was just like, yo, Irv Gotti, suck my dick, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Bro, oh, okay, bossing over real quick. All right. <laughs> so oh, yeah, we, gave a, we gave the people some show. We gave the people <laughs> some sports, some non-sports, some cultural shit. We gave people a history lesson. We gave people some, some shit talking. We gave some people some, some personal. We talk about the, the hairlines and shit. We gave them everything. So now we ask you to give us one more thing. Your Patreon membership, patreon.com slash count the things. Make sure you're locked in so you're getting all that extra content. For Jason Madison, for Trayvon Edwards, for John Gervais, I'm Amino Hassan, reminding you to stay black, motherfuckers.